Quickly, before the video starts, click subscribe and then notifications. I am this close to having 100,000 subs. Apparently, that's where the magic happens for YouTube channels. I promise to never waste your time, give you great information and terrific photography, okay? You're actually doing yourself a favor. Thanks. It's 2019. We don't have jetpacks. There are no flying cars. Heck, we don't even have fully autonomous vehicles. But technology keeps chipping away at how much effort we need to exert while driving. Cadillac's CT6, which I have reviewed before, makes cruising very easy. And no, it's not due to a soft, cushy ride because that's in the brand's past. I'm checking this car out again because I want to do a deep dive on the level two super cruise system. On that scale, level zero, meaning no autonomy whatsoever, basically your mom's old Corolla without cruise control, level five being a fully functional self-driving car. Level two systems are available on cars from Audi, BMW, Mercedes, Volvo, and Tesla. Super Cruise is only available on CT6 for now. Cadillac plans on rolling it out to other models. That's important since production of CT6 is scheduled to wind down in 2020. It's coming in CT4 and 5. Perhaps Cadillac should have found a way to get it into Escalade, XT4, 5, and 6 first. People are flocking to SUVs and crossovers these days, if you haven't heard. What makes Super Cruise super? It starts with cameras and sensors, of course. These tell the car what's happening around it. General Motors has LiDAR mapped some 130,000 miles of highway. An update will add 70,000 more. There's also an incredibly accurate GPS system. Then there's this camera that's basically watching you, making sure that you're present and accounted for and not watching SpongeBob SquarePants. Finally, this is an LED light bar that changes color depending on the the situation. Long distance road tripping is the only way to test Super Cruise, so I'll head from Seattle to Portland, Oregon. But first, a quick primer on the CT6. The Super Cruise package is a $6,000 option on premium and sport models, standard on this Platinum. My tester runs with a twin turbocharged 3 liter V6. There's 404 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque happening here. The 2019 models get a 10-speed automatic transmission and an electronic shift lever I'm not all that crazy about. There are steering wheel paddles for manual control and drive modes that actually make a difference. This is an all-wheel drive car. And it jets from rest to 60 miles an hour in five seconds flat. It has active rear steering and magnetic ride control dampers. Good stuff. I'll also point out something that the Cadillac marketing people just can't seem to communicate, and that is its cars are really fun to drive. This is a full-size sedan, and yet it's sporty in the corners. It's crisp. It's clean. There's no body roll. There's no dive. I mean, really, I have to believe that uh, the target buyer might actually think that the suspension is a little bit too firm, that they're looking for comfort. As equipped, this CT6 retails for $88,490, but if you're smitten, I bet your local dealership would be happy to move a sedan off the lot, if you know what I mean. All right, let's head to Portland. Let's check out Super Cruise. Unlike Tesla's autopilot, Super Cruise does not operate on highway on-ramps and exits, and again, it only engages on charted divided highways for now. Once you're on a mapped highway and you've got the adaptive cruise control on, you'll get a gray symbol here, it's a steering wheel. Uh, push the Super Cruise button, the light turns green, and we're on our way to Portland. I'm just along for the ride. On this gentle curve here, uh, it's taking it very, very confidently. Uh, no ping-ponging around. Uh, you know, I've only been doing this for a couple minutes, and I feel very confident with this system. I'm finding it paces cars ahead of me very smoothly, no jerky actions. Like a human driver, it doesn't leave a big, big gap so people can slide in front of me. Uh, I have noticed a couple people have come by 
and given me a dirty look because I don't have my hands on the steering wheel, this is a test, people. I'm ready to take control. I'm traveling through Tacoma, where there's been construction and rerouting on Interstate 5 for years. The system is kind of timid here, disengaging every so often, and a heavy rain squall seemed to make it much more cautious. <laughs> Honestly, I'm okay with that, being into self-preservation and all. One thing Super Cruise won't do, it won't change lanes automatically. You have to physically signal. The steering wheel turns blue, move into the lane, and it goes back to green, and you're set for more cruising. Autopilot is what most people will compare Super Cruise to, so I'll point out that while running in navigation on autopilot mode, Teslas can automatically change lanes if the driver has set it up that way. Once south of Tacoma, Super Cruise is rock solid. Let's talk about the camera. It's always watching to make sure that your eyes are straight ahead. If I decided to uh, check my shot here and see how that's going, maybe look at Twitter. Uh, no, it doesn't like that. The steering wheel flashes. Now, if I continue to ignore this and things got really bad, the system would disengage and stop the car in its lane and then call OnStar, figuring you're having a medical emergency. And if you trigger the warning too many times, Super Cruise switches off and won't arm for a while, effectively giving you a timeout. If you're worried about the camera being affected by sunglasses, no, it doesn't. I also tried a pair of polarized sunglasses, and uh, that doesn't seem to affect the system whatsoever. Uh, I even tried ugly sunglasses. Still doesn't flinch. Since Tacoma, my hands and feet have not touched the controls other than to demonstrate lane changing for you. All other semi-autonomous systems require hands on the wheel, at least most of the time. And Cadillac's technology is remarkably stable and solid. It tracks straighter than most other drivers on the road. One thing Super Cruise won't do, it will not break for debris in the road. So if a truck loses a tire tread and it's sitting in the middle of the lane, you need to steer around that. Funny thing, that actually happened. Bringing up something unexpected, being more relaxed actually made me more attentive, not less. Odd, yes, but I felt more aware of my surroundings because the system lightened my mental load. I suppose if you were hungry and went through the Mickey D's drive through it would be a lot easier to eat your french fries and Big Mac. That's an advantage. So is making hands-free phone calls and returning texts using Apple CarPlay. While many of us do this in our cars now, doing it while the car's in control is much more relaxing. So I gotta say, after a couple hours of just sitting here and not doing anything, you kind of get bored. You can look around at the scenery and it is definitely relaxing uh, and it's definitely confident, uh, but yeah. It gave me a chance to focus on the excellent Bose Panerai sound system, too. I was prepared to fight off sleep, but using Super Cruise seemed to make me more alert. Uh, maybe it's the novelty. And as I roll towards the Washington-Oregon border, traffic thickens up. The CT6 does a great job of pacing closely without a huge gap for other drivers to jump into, right down to a complete stop. It also continues all by itself, no issues at all. So why did I head to Portland? <laughs> I hear the calamari here is to die for. Actually, it's because I was attending the Ford Explorer press event. Once again, Cadillac can't get Super Cruise into its SUVs soon enough. Not that the CT6 isn't desirable. It's quiet, comfortable, and powerful. The rear view mirror isn't always a mirror. A camera offers up a wide, clear view, though it takes a moment for eyes to focus on it. The interior is very nice, though I'll get on my soapbox and plead to General Motors to let Cadillac be Cadillac with no compromises at all to the materials. A distinctive font on the controls and a better dressed engine bay would help too, even though few owners will ever open the hood. These are the kind of details Audi, BMW, and Mercedes don't slack on. The back seats, this is Cadillac's largest sedan, so as you would expect, there's a good amount of room back here. Not as spacious as, say, a Mercedes S-Class, but it's roomy. 
And the Platinum model here has everything a passenger would want in a luxury ride, including entertainment, a little bit of privacy, a terrific view, more privacy, a separate climate zone, plus heated and vented seats that have a massage feature in case your personal masseuse is on vacation. It's pretty much all here, including no shortage of options to charge up a phone. And if you're wondering why Evil Twin isn't testing the back seat, uh, would you drive to Portland with that guy? I rest my case. Oh, and the trunk. It's not huge for a large sedan, but that's not uncommon in this class. There's a spare, something BMW doesn't always offer. The seats don't fold down, but a ski pass-through helps. The Portland Costco doesn't know me, so no TP trunk test, but I can tell you it would hold five packs. I like the updated fascias that give the 2019 CT6 a cleaner, edgier look. I don't think Cadillac gets enough credit for its unique design language, like vertical DRLs that stand out in traffic. That's not always the case with brands these days. I also think Super Cruise is terrific. The tech is as close to on-rails as semi-autonomous driving gets today. Super Cruise would give Cadillac an edge if it could roll it out to all of its vehicles, and that will eventually happen. Can't be soon enough. Same goes for those jetpacks. Again, this system will be compared to Tesla's autopilot, but let me stress, the two are kind of different. For one thing, without going into detail, the approaches are different. Tesla doesn't require the mapping. And if you want an EV and a high level of highway autonomy, Tesla is the only way to go. And because of its neural net learning and over-the-air updates, autopilot can get better all the time. Elon Musk claims the current hardware being installed in every Tesla will give all of these cars full driving capability in all conditions once the software improves. But as it stands today, my spidey sense finds the hands-free Super Cruise to feel more secure and confident on the highways that it's mapped for. And GM says updates will improve its functionality. How much? I can't tell you now. Last, but certainly not least, I had a lot of help producing this video, which took days, to be honest with you. Martin Campbell and Rob Calero got up early to help me shoot the car-to-car -car footage from the back of Martin's pickup. You know, everybody needs to know somebody with a pickup truck. Glad to know you, Martin. Oh, glad to know you, Tom. <laughs> High-tech rig. Yes, that's my uh, fabulous bracing. I was in the back with the uh, iPhone and the gimbal. Since I don't have millions of subscribers, this channel is hardly lucrative. We do this out of passion, not for money. They only got breakfast out of the deal and the chance to try Super Cruise. It's kind of freaky, isn't it? This is weird. Welcome to the future. Martin, who is an excellent still photographer and the IT specialist for a major Seattle law firm, is not easily impressed. Finally, before I go that full disclosure thing, I am a Cadillac owner, an ELR, a kind of a unicorn if you know what that is. I'm also famously not brand loyal. I have a couple American cars, a Korean car, a European car, a Japanese car. Really, I'm just out here looking for the truth. Aren't we all? That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.